For this week's Your Health segment, we are joined by Dr. Stephen Pollack, cardiologist at the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Doctor, thanks for being here. It's great to be here, Jeff. We've been reading about caffeine and apparently some studies that say it's okay. What's really interesting is there was one study came out several weeks ago and it made the front page news of everywhere. And beca that's because caffeine is like the number one drink in the country. It implied, that study, that you can drink caffeine without a heart problem. The study is flawed because it goes back to 1990, when people were drinking a cup of coffee was four ounces, maybe two cups of coffee was eight ounces. Today, this is 12 ounces, so that's three of those, and this has close to 300 milligrams of caffeine. This has close to 400 milligrams of caffeine. This is a venti. This is their Trenta. This has close to 600 milligrams of caffeine. So there's no question that caffeine will, is a stimulant, raises pulse and blood pressure. It's now, a drug. Yes. Now, I have to be very careful because my son Jeremy and my partner Brett Roberts, who's an electrophysiologist, said I cannot say that caffeine is directly related to the cause of atrial fibrillation. However, it's directly related to the cause of atrial fibrillation anecdotally. I didn't hear the distinction, but yes. go on. <laughs> anecdotally. So either in my experience, patients who are prone, who are at risk, who have high blood pressure, under stress, you start putting that much caffeine in their body. And, and I've never seen anyone eat a drink at all. So they have two of these. Sometimes they have two of these. We're talking 600 to 800 milligrams of caffeine a day. That is an irritant to the heart, and particularly in older patients, it will increase their risk for cardiac rhythm abnormalities, including atrial fibrillation. So when you say anecdotally you believe that, what you're saying is in all your years of practicing, yes, you've talked to a lot of people who have uh, heart rhythm abnormalities, and you ask, uh, how much coffee did you have today? Yes, and free, what they'll say is, I have two cups, and I go, well, do you mean a cup that you got in the restaurant? No, no, they, I got this at the Starbucks, or I got Dunkin' Donuts, or I got 7-Eleven, all of which are huge cups of coffee, and a, a great, a large amount of caffeine. What hap it, it's just, that's the mistake of that study. And it's a retrospective study, so it looked back. You know, no one's really done a study to take a look at two groups of people who drink all of this and who don't drink it and see if they have rhythm abnormalities. Do people, do people have a different level of tolerance for this stuff. So I, I have almost no caffeine. If I drank one of those, I would be awake until next Thursday. Yes, me too. And I would have heart rhythm abnormalities. I think the younger population, in all honesty, can tolerate this. The older population, defined as over 45 to 50, doesn't do as well. What does it do to blood pressure? Raises other blood impacts? pressure. So what's really ironic is someone who comes into your office with blood pressure that's elevated and having trouble controlling it, the first question I ask is, are you adding salt to your food? And the second is, are you drinking caffeine? Because both of those raise your blood pressure. So here's a patient receiving a lot of drugs to lower their blood pressure, and they're taking drugs to raise their blood pressure. So it makes a lot of sense for me to take that out from their diet rather than give them more drugs. And, and somebody who uh, you're working long hours, you have a cup of coffee to wake you up. Um, yes. But if you do that every day, then you need a little bit more. Yes. I mean, is you the, develop, does your body you, adjust to it? Well, there's no evidence that it develops a tolerance, but you start talking to people and they need more and more caffeine. Now, what I tell people is, particularly who have heart rhythm abnormalities or hypertension, go ahead, you can have a, a cup of coffee. That's the cup that they serve you in the restaurant, which is four ounces. That's 100 milligrams of caffeine. You can't have this. They make decaf also. You can have all the decaf you want. There's but decaf five, isn't zero either. It's 5 to 15 milligrams of caffeine. So that's nothing. You can have 200 milligrams of caffeine a day without a problem. But when you start getting 600, 800, 1,000 milligrams, you're going to have problems. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about caffeine or your heart in general, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen or tweet your question to at MPT News. Let's broaden it out to, to heart health. Sure, I like that. What, what aren't we focusing enough on these days? So the number one cause of death in this country is coronary artery disease, blocked arteries in the heart. The first symptom of that illness is death one third of the time. Now that is an incredible statement and yet it's true. So most of this country knows that if you're over 50, the test you need to get is a colonoscopy. That's the number six cause of death. No one gets the appropriate test for identifying coronary disease. And the tragedy of that is all the advances that we've made in, car in the treatment, angioplasty, heart surgery, medications, 
None of that is available to you if your first symptom is dropping dead. What is the appropriate test? Because people may think, well, I get a checkup every so often, they do an EKG, I've been tested. Right, no, the EKG doesn't tell you anything about the status of your heart arteries, and it doesn't say whether or not you have blocked arteries. So the best test to get is called a coronary calcium score. That's a CAT scan of the heart. So what happens is when you put blockages inside the artery, the artery doesn't like it, and puts calcium around the wall. That calcium is a marker for the presence of the disease. So if your calcium score is elevated, you're at higher risk for coronary disease, you actually have coronary disease, and you need to be on therapy. And that's before you ever have a symptom. Your EKG is normal, your stress test would be normal. But you still have 30, 40, 50% blocked arteries, all of which can cause a heart attack. In fact, that's the most common cause of a heart attack. So somebody with, with no history, uh, no symptoms, goes to the primary care, and they're <clears throat> what age should you? So any man over the age of 45 should have a calcium score. Any woman over the age of 50. What is really ironic about this is insurance doesn't cover it. I was going to ask. Well, insurance that's where I was going. You, you go to your primary care and say, I, you know, I heard on TV from Dr. Pollock I should have this done. Yes. What, what's, what's he or she going to say? Well, I would hope they say you sh that you should get it done. You, by the way, don't need a physician's order for this because it's, it's cash out of your pocket. So the test now costs anywhere between $75 and $120. It's offered at St. Joe. Uh, we have a program called HeartAware, which is excellent. You can go online. You can find out what your risks are. It pretty much pushes most people towards this score. And then if your score is greater than zero, really, greater than 25, you should see somebody about being placed on therapy. And so that, that therapy includes an aspirin, which prevents heart attack, and a statin, which prevents heart attacks. Um, CT scan, uh, painless, and painless, you're not five injecting minutes. anybody with five, that. No dye, it's five minutes, it's radiation, it's the equivalent of about five chest x-rays or so. And the interesting thing is, once that test is abnormal, you never get it again. It's, you don't do serial tests. Once you've identified that you have the disease, you then go on therapy and receive follow-up from the cardiologist. All right, talk about the aspirin thing a little bit more. You're talking baby aspirin? Yes. So what causes a heart attack is when this minor blockage breaks and it triggers a cascade of events that causes a blood clot. Aspirin prevents that. A drug as simple as aspirin, which by the way, we didn't know in 1980. We didn't find this out until 1985. But what causes a heart attack is the broken or ruptured plaque that precipitates blood clots. Quick phone call, Baltimore City. This is Marsha. Marsha, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, I just was um, wondering if Dr. Pollock had any comments on the energy drinks that so many young people really drink a lot of. Uh, my son, one yeah. of them, the 20 and 30 year olds, Marcia, and I'll take my answer. Time. Fabulous question. Thank you very much. So the monster drinks, the monster energy drinks, have about 160 milligrams of caffeine, like Red Bull, 150 milligrams. So that's less than one cup of coffee. So you have to drink three or four of them to get the equivalent of a grande caffeine coffee from Starbucks. Okay. So it's, I don't recommend it, but it's not as bad as having two of those. Um, and we talked about the baby aspirin. Focus in on the statins for, for a second. So you do have some side effects there. Or yeah, statin, to about 3% of people will have a side effect from statins, and that is muscle aches. Interestingly enough, when they did the study, the same 3% who weren't on the statins had muscle aches. The drug is remarkable in that it prevents heart attacks. It lowers the incidence of heart attack by 60%. That is, it stabilizes that blockage so it doesn't rupture or break, and it prevents progression. So it's, in essence, a wonder drug, and it's the standard treatment for coronary disease. Dr. Stephen Pollack is a cardiologist with the University of Maryland St. Joseph Medical Center. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thanks for having Appreciate me. Appreciate you taking the coffee cups. Oh, I have to. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.